La, la, la. Where is my student? He's not here. And why am I singing? God, I suck at singing. Ah, text would be nice. Phone call, email, note from a pigeon, something. I think I hear him. Hey, what's going on? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I know I'm late. I know I'm late. Yeah, I was doing like you said, I was studying up on how time signatures work and I completely lost track of time. No pun intended. Hey, nice outfit, by the way. Am I sensing a little sarcasm? No. All right, so tell me about time signatures. That's so easy. The top number tells us how high to count. For example, if we're in three, four, I'm gonna count to three. One, two, 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 three. One. If I'm in four, four, I'm gonna count to four. One. Should I go to five? All right, five, four is one, two, three, four, five. 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 One. See, I totally got this. So, can we learn double bass now? Yes, but first, tell me what the bottom number of the time signature does. Oh yeah, I forgot. Any chance you'll let me look it up? Of course. I'm not here to put you on the spot or embarrass you. I'm here to help. You are a nice person. Hey Siri, what does the bottom number of a time signature mean? The bottom number of the time signature, the second number when written as text, is descriptive of the length of the beats. <laughs> All right, I'll admit that was a little bit confusing, but I've got a bunch of books right here, theory books, snare drum books, drum set books, so they all basically say the same thing. So yeah, take your pick. Okay, it says the bottom number indicates which kind of note gets the beat. Huh? Well, basically what that means is if there's a four on the bottom, a quarter note gets the beat. If there's an eight on the bottom, an eighth note gets the beat. If there's a 16 on the bottom, a 16th note gets the beat. Make sense? Huh? So if there's an eight on the bottom, then how do we play 16th notes? Seriously? I just explained it. You're just messing with me, right? If I say yes, will you stop being so annoyed with me? And scene. So the bottom number of a time signature indicates what type of note gets the beat. Technically that's correct, but to me that's like when you're reading a sentence and you come across a word that's unfamiliar, and when you go to look up that word, the definition just uses that word in a sentence. For example, define haberdashery. Haberdashery means the goods and wares sold by a haberdasher. Yeah. So there's two simple things that will help to make the bottom number of a time signature make sense. Number one, the bottom number is telling us how to count. And that's worth repeating. The bottom number is telling us how to count. For example, when we see three, four, 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 five, four, basically anything with a four on the bottom, we'll count quarter notes simply as numbers. If we see eighth notes, we count them as a number followed by an and. And if we see 16th notes, we'll count it starting with a number and then E and a. Uh. So here's an example of eighth notes with the counting written in. All right, so if there's an eight on the bottom, rather than counting each note as a number and an and, we're gonna count each note as a number. Here's that same measure of music, but notice this time that the time signature is eight, eight, and the counting is just numbers rather than numbers followed by ands.
A little earlier, I mentioned that there's two things that will help to make the bottom number of a time signature easier to understand. So the first one was how to count, but the second thing is to remember that numbers are the click and are the pulse of the song. So what does that really mean? Let's take a listen to both examples one more time, but this time I'll have a metronome playing and just notice that the metronome only plays on the numbers. So now I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate a couple of eighth note grooves. The first one will be in 7-4, followed by a groove in 7-8. And try to notice a couple of things. Number one, the counting, and also how the metronome relates to the rhythm that I'm playing on the hi-hat. So what happens when we encounter 16th notes when the bottom number of a time signature has an 8? Because typically we count 16th notes with a number followed by E and A, uh, like this. So when we see 16th notes and the bottom number of the time signature is an eight, we're now gonna count the 16th notes as numbers followed by ands, like this. So now I'm gonna play a couple of grooves that incorporate 16th notes. The first one will be in five four, followed by a groove in five eight. All right, so you wanna dive into this a little bit deeper. What happens when there's a 16 on the bottom? Again, this is just telling us how to count. Because normally we count 16th notes as one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, and so on. But now we're gonna count each one of those 16th notes as a number. So let's start with a bar of two, four. I've set the metronome to 60, and I'm gonna play 16th notes. So notice how the counting and the metronome work together. One E and a, two E and a, 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 one E and a, two E
What I'm about to play on the practice pad will sound exactly like the previous example of 2.4 because I've quadrupled the speed from 60 to 240. So the time signature now is 8.16. So notice how the metronome and the counting work together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 All right, so I think I'm gonna wrap things up now. I hope the bottom number makes more sense. And if you want me to go deeper into grooves that have a 16 on the bottom, things like 15, 16, 17, 16, 19, 16, just let me know and I'd be more than happy to make that video for you guys. So, see you on the next one.